Hello everyone. Today, I bring you one of the most requested tutorials in recent days. How to draw and paint jewelries. This is going to be a beginner friendly tutorial, so don't panic and let's get into it. Before we get into the tutorial, let me quickly show you the brush I have used to paint this portrait and the jewelry. Unfortunately, I couldn't read the name because it's in Thai. So if you guys can read it, let me know in the comments. I hope you can see it clearly and would be able to find it on the online page. Now, let's get started. I'm going to start with the easiest ones. Then I'll gradually increase the difficulty and finally I'll show you which one I would go for this portrait. Don't worry, it's not too difficult and I'll give you some little tricks and tips to help you guide. First, I'm going to turn on the mirror ruler. And I'm going to turn the layer mode to add so that it glows. You guys who watch me for a long time would know that I love glowing things. Now this is the most basic thing you could have done for a jewelry. Next I'm going to show you some easy trick that is just randomly adding patterns of the jewelry. You don't really need to add too much details because this kind of drawing forces your mind to think that there is something even if there is literally nothing much going on. Now this is another way if you want to play more with light and shadows. First make the darker version of the jewelry, then add light on the above layer. Ok so now that we are done with the lower layer, now it's time to add the light. If you like your jewelry really fast and neat, well good news, I have something for you. Just go to the chains section of the brush menu and choose any chains from them to use it as a jewelry. I will show you several simple examples that should help. This chin is probably my most favorite one because it's really pretty. So I'm going to add something little extra to make it look nicer. Now that is pretty neat. Next up I'm going to show you a little bit more detailed stuff if you really want better light and shadow in your jewelry. First, draw the design you want to. Then turn on the alpha lock so that when you add the shadows and light, the colors doesn't spill out. After adding the shadow according to the light source, add the light on a new layer. You have to clip the layer and turn the blending mode into add.
Now the finishing touch would be adding a little bit shadow under them to show that they are not floating but actually on the skin. To do that, we are simply going to duplicate the jewelry layer and change the mode to multiply. Then reposition it just under the jewel. So these are all the basic things you need to know to make a standard jewelry. Next, I'm going to show you something different from the usual metal style. Something more colorful, more organic. This is a random design I came up with while drawing. I'm not the best in case of doodling, so my apologies if the design is not that appealing. So this is the final design and now I'm going to use the power of copy pasting. Next we have to attach a string to it. Then like the previous example, I'm going to add light and shadow the same way. Now we are going to level up a little bit and try to draw a chain ourselves. If you are a person who likes to paint everything by themselves to keep the vibe of the entire artwork constant, then this is for you. But if you want to skip the work and go for an easier solution, please go to the next part using the timestamp. Drawing a chain is not a difficult thing. You just have to think as if you are drawing closed brackets one after another. So don't worry if one chain is bigger than another, but try to maintain the size to some extent. Now I'm going to draw a flower on the intersecting point. Then I'm going to use the flower for one ear, then do the chain for another. Finishing it up with little bit of highlighting and shadows like the earlier ones. So what do you think about it? Not too difficult, is it? This is going to be a similar but more precise version of the last style because we are going to use the chin brush and the flower stamp. After adding the chains and the flower stamp, all we need is to add a little bit of light and shadow like every time and then we will be done with this one as well. It's time for a different approach. First, I'm going to make a design as usual. Then from the top right corner, we're going to choose the material pattern option. You can see there are different jewelry patterns. 
Let's try those out. I'm going to use this pattern. You can change the color or change the layer mode to create some interesting look. This one looks really fun to me but I'm going to show you all the other options as well. As I said before, you can change the color, also brightness and saturation to your liking. Finally, it's time to show you which style I would personally go for this specific portrait. It's going to be not too difficult and not too easy. Something moderate I would say. At first, like most of the time, I'm going to use the mirror ruler to draw the chain. I'm going to use this specific ruler to make a flower pattern. You can keep it same colored. I'm just adding a little bit of red because it fits with the portrait. So now that I'm done with this extra little bits, we have a pretty flower patterned necklace. Like I have explained before, I'm going to add a bit of shadows and lights of course to give a 3D look. Now it's time I use the power of copy paste once again for the earrings. Time to add some shadow under the jewelry and finish it up with my favorite highlights. Then we're going to be finally done.
And with this one, today's video on jewelry ends here. Hope you enjoyed watching it and learned how to do some basic designs as a beginner. Once you get used to making simple designs, you can definitely try going for some complex ones. Once again, thank you for watching and I'll see you next week.